Yo, yo, what's up guys? It's Lord Saint back again with another vid. And today I'd like to talk about my soilless potting mix. If you watch my previous video, which is about my shade house, you'll know that I grow majority of my plants outside. With my shade house, the only obstacle that I face, the only major obstacle that I face is rain, especially being down here in South Florida. I get weeks and weeks and seasons of straight rain. So I quickly learned, I built the shade house about, we'll call it more than a year ago, um, fully extended it late last year. Uh, but the obstacle that I had with all the shade fabric, everything was perfect. You know, I got the, the sunlight right and everything, um, or filtering the sun right. But the obstacle that I had was the water that was getting to the plants. It wasn't conducive to uh, a thriving plant with my old mix. And let's talk about the old mix. There's nothing wrong with the old mix. It just didn't fit for me. And my old mix was predominantly just potting mix, store-bought potting mix with perlite, normal perlite. And if I felt like I needed it to be a little more well draining, I would just add more perlite or add a little loomy soil. And that would, you know, help my drainage. But last year I ran into a huge problem. Majority of my plants, sensitive, non-sensitive, they started to get root rot. And I quickly realized, oh no, what am I going to do here? So I had to think of a better option soil wise for the plants to thrive outdoors. So I decided to go to a chunky mix or formulate a chunky mix so my plants outdoors can thrive. Um, so let's get right into it with the mix that I created. Cocoa chunks is my base. And I know it sounds crazy. Wait, cocoa chunks is your base? Yes, it's my base. Enough of it um, is actually pretty decent in water retention. And when I say cocoa chunks, I buy it in blocks and I actually have some. These are Repta chips, cocoa chips, cocoa chunks. I get this on Amazon. Like I said, majority of them are equally the same thing it'll come in a block like this and i'll drop it in some type of container fill it with water and it'll slowly start to break apart and as it breaks apart you know i separate it and from that separation i take it put it into another tub wet it again just to make sure i'm getting all uh, excess sediment off of it and then it's ready to use so that serves as my base. And like I said, I know you're probably thinking, what, that, that, that's your base. Yes, that's my base. I think it has pretty decent water uh, retentive attributes. Um, so that's, that's what my base looks like. Immediately after, I go straight to my perlite. And the perlite I use isn't your ordinary perlite. I use size three perlite. And I'll put this in my hand to show you guys. I was using normal just basic store-bought perlite, which is tiny, tiny, you know, grains of, of perlite for the longest. And that perlite was all great, but I think I was running into the issue that almost everybody runs into with just normal perlite. And that was that it was rising to the top of whatever mix I was putting it in. It was so fine and it's so weightless and, and airy that when I was watering my plants, I was noticing all the perlite was rising to the top. So my plant mentor, he told me, hey, go head out and get size three or size four perlite. And that's exactly what I did. And I went out and I got size three or size four perlite. And you can see it's much bigger. This is one piece here. This is another piece here. It's much bigger than your normal perlite. And I got that, I'll put that here so you can kind of see. I got that and that made a world of difference. It made a world of difference because I needed an airy mix that was the issue i was running into all my plants were rotting outside all the rainfall we were getting i needed something to combat i needed a mix that was going to let water almost just fall right through and that it was going to have some properties some por uh, some portions of the mix just be water retentive and i needed the perlite this size size three or four like i said are the two that i've uh, that i've used uh, for the larger potting mixes or larger plants you know when monsteras get huge size four is great um, but i've stuck with size three Naturally, what we have next, I think everybody uses this, or majority of people use it when we're dealing with aeroids, is 
bark. But what I did is I, I played it a little smart. Searching locally for bark was a bit tougher just for me to find bark itself. And then I did find bark in the local hardware store and they sold it in a bag. But then I found bark in bags that were just orchid mix. Good old orchid mix. And I'm like, hold on. This has, this one specifically, this is one that I recently started buying, has lava rock, fir bark, charcoal, and coarse perlite. So it gives me a little more of that perlite, which is always a good thing in my opinion. Um, it gives me charcoal, which we'll go over really quick in a bit, and then the bark, which is really what I really wanted. But this one gives me the lava rock. Depending on which batch you get, it has uh, you know different ingredients. Uh, but the fir bark is what I really wanted in this. This was a ready to go mix. So if you want to try this soilless mix that I'm telling you about now, head out to your local hardware supply store, your, your local nursery, get an orchid mix, and that's your base right there. It has pretty much almost everything. Depending on which one, it'll have cocoa chunks in it, and you can pretty much get started that way and test this out. But good old orchid mix is what I use for the bark. Not to say, you, if you can find a supplier that sells you the bark, fine bark, coarse bark, whatever uh, bark it is that works for you in your setting, I'd buy it that way. This just works for me whenever I need to fill my huge tub of, of soilless potting mix. Whenever I just need to top it off, I just head over and buy this. It's like five, six dollars a bag and it satisfies um, my needs. Why? bark because if we understand aeroid and I'm not a botanist or anything but common sense tells me when I'm working you know when I'm growing these aeroids predominantly phyllo I love my philodendron and monstera is they're climbing up trees the aero roots so a big portion of the plant's life is exposed roots because it's all climbing on trees so I felt it was smart to mimic the natural settings it was in in my soilless mix so the way I understand it is if I get the bark and put it in the, in the mix itself, it's a better surface for the roots to navigate over and around. And I've seen that in my collection. If you've seen me post any of my plants, my reels, uh, my photographs on Instagram, then you'll see that my plants generally are happy. A lot of them are being rehabbed from when they did have rot or the cold snap that we just recovered from down here in South Florida. But the bark is a must. It's, it's my go-to. Um, in these and like I said I just buy these these bags of bark or orchid mix which come with a lot of the other ingredients that I use in addition to the bark in that bag that we saw we have charcoal horticultural charcoal now you can do this two ways you can do it in a, in a batch like this or if you want a little more and you want different sizes you can buy it in its own bag horticultural charcoal and the charcoal aids in a lot of uh, antifungal um, antibacteria properties so it's good it's supposed to be like a cleanse for your plant when it's in there uh, clean properties for the plant and its root system helps to prevent a lot of fungus uh, bacteria um, and rot even because of the aeration properties that um, it adds to your soilless mix so the charcoal is always a great option like I said just make sure it's horticultural grade or you're buying it in one of these again one of these orchid bags and it'll tell you charcoal right there and it's just a natural cleaner for, for your mix don't get it confused with like you know grilling charcoal don't go to the grocery store and start chucking grilling charcoal into your mix make sure it's horticultural great charcoal and lastly worm castings we all know what this is it's it's worm poop it's all worm poop and I use this religiously every time I'll take a bag every time I make a my, my huge tub of soilless potty mix, I pretty much dump, if not all, if half to all of this bag in, into there. Sprinkle it over, mix it, sprinkle it again, mix it, sprinkle it again. That way I have a little bit, a little bit of it everywhere. The worm castings are rich in nutrients and trace minerals, which is why they're good. If you get this, and this is easy to find, I think you can either get it on Amazon or it should be in your local big box nursery if you have one around you. If not, just ask your, your local nursery. They should have something in regards to worm castings, but this stuff is, is, is pretty good. I've always used it for planting seeds, transplanting for my potted plants, top dressing, you name it. I've used this in pretty much all of my mixes as a natural source of rich nutrients and trace minerals. So clearly in my soil mix we've gone over, we've seen bark, we've seen perlite. This one specifically has a lava rocks in it. And size three perlite, let's not, for, don't forget size three perlite. 
cocoa chips or cocoa chunks, which however you'd like to call it. That serves as my base. It has good water retentive properties when I have a lot of it in the mix. So depending on what I'm potting up, if I feel like it needs a little bit more, I'll just add more of the cocoa chunks into that mix. Worm castings and pretty much those four ingredients get the job done for me. Like I said, if you feel like you wanna try something like this, you can go ahead and buy like these orchid bags and they'll have pretty much the bark, the charcoal, the perlite, and then you could add the cocoa chips in an extreme measure where I, where I have like allocation, which I don't collect too many allocation. But if I were to add allocation to my mix, certain types of caladium, plants of that, uh, of that classification that kind of need uh, a little bit more like swamp side plants, then I'll get cocoa peat. I stay away from everything else. I don't use any soil. I don't use any sphagnum peat, you know, anything like a, a cocoa. It's all cocoa um, here in, in my collection. So either cocoa peat or cocoa chunks as my base. And then I start adding, like I said, size three perlite, the bark, the charcoal, worm castings. And we're normally good on that. A lot of these don't have a good natural source for uh, fertilizer, for plant food. I do have to add my own plant food. Currently what I'm using, and I'm waiting on a few things to come in, currently I use Liquider, CalMag, and Kelp um, as a, a big portion of my plant food, and that's on a weekly basis. I have some other things that are coming up that just recently became available in the U.S. I won't talk about them just yet because I want to see when I do finally get them, I want to see what they do for the, for the collection before I leave a review or anything about or recommend it. This is as chunky as my mix is. And you'll see here, and we did this video with Perfect Choice Nursery when I did it with uh, Melody and Paula. And you can squeeze this and we we're out there and this falls right out of your hand. It's not anything that's gonna be dense in the mix. It was responsible for a lot of rot or it just killed off my plants. And this mix that I use here, I use it indoors as well. I posted a plant on my Instagram today. Uh, it's a variegated Adansonii, and that plant was going through root rot. And I brought it inside, I changed to this thick, chunky mix, and it's finally back. It's, it's starting to thrive again, and that's indoors. Now, if I needed it to have a little bit more water retention, like I said, cocoa peat or cocoa chunks, either or, add into your mix, and should work just fine. That's Lord Saint with another video. I think our takeaway from this is air is your friend. Air is my friend at least. I don't know if it works for you and your growing conditions, but air is definitely my friend. I love the air. I, hold on. I think we need a, a little mini mic for this one. I love air. I love air so much. Tell me how I'm supposed to breathe with no air. I love the air. The air is your friend. But seriously, make sure you have a good airy mix. It doesn't have to be this. Uh, I'm sure if I talk to my plant mentor and he's if he watches this, he'll be like, that's so many different ingredients. You don't need that. Probably right. You're definitely right. But this works for me. This makes me happy. This mix, looking at this mix, makes me happy. And if you're thinking what part to what, you know, how much of this, how much of that, I eyeball it, honestly. It depends what, I'm, what plant that I'm uh, potting up and it also depends on your setting, how much rain you're really gonna get in, in a particular area, how many times a week you really wanna water um, that, that particular plant, because you can make it really, really chunky, or like I said, you can add certain things like the cocoa chunks or the cocoa peat um, for more water retention. There are certain things you can add. There's several, several um, ingredients that you can add outside of this. This is just my basis. This is generally where I start. No soil, just this. I urge you to try it out. If you're already trying this out, drop something in the comments. Tell me if you have something that's a little different um, than what my concoction is. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to try it. But if you're trying something totally, completely different, hydroponics, whatever it is, let us know in the comments what's working for you right now. I'm curious. I'd love to see. I'd love to experiment. But this is my mix, my go-to right here. And you can see how beautiful it is. This is just beautiful. It's very beautiful. It makes me happy. And this spring is gonna be the first season. This growth season is gonna be the first season where I really get to see what this does. And I really have the plants on a proper feeding schedule with nutrition and whatnot, with all the minerals that they need. So I'm excited for this growth season. I definitely wanted to share this with you as we crawl into March. Uh, any questions, feel free to hit me here or on Instagram. You can slide in the DMs and ask me anything. Just tell me, you know, you're from YouTube. Thanks for joining me. Before I leave, I'll show you 
my successful, my most successful plant thus far that uh, is in this, this exact mix right here. Thanks for joining me. I'm Lord Saint. Have a great day.